This is Chris Dewey from May River Medicare, and we're going to talk about open enrollment, what it is, when it is, and what you can do. All right? Hey, guys, did you know that Medicare gives you more than one chance to change your Medicare Advantage plan or drop your Medicare Advantage plan and go to a Part D? Everybody knows about the famous fall enrollment period between October and December 7th where you can make changes as many times as you want. You can go from an Advantage plan to an Advantage plan, a Part D plan, or original Medicare, you can get an Advantage plan, you can do everything. But we're getting a lot of calls. My clients are asking me about open enrollment for Medicare Advantage. And we're gonna talk about that today. Because between January 1st and March 31st, you can change Advantage plans. You can drop your Advantage plan and switch to a drug plan, okay? Let's go into that for a second. Now, one thing that if, if you have a Medicare supplement or no Medicare plan at all, this period doesn't even apply to you, this Medicare Advantage open enrollment, all right? So, but this is what you can do if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, current Medicare Advantage plan. Oops, there it is. You can get a new Medicare Advantage plan. You can make one change between now and March 31st. If you have a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to just say the heck with that, I want to go back to original Medicare, you can do that by getting a standalone Part D drug plan. So that would knock out the Advantage plan. You'd have original Medicare and you would have a supplement. Now, I would, um, if you drop your Medicare Advantage plan, you may want to apply for a Medicare supplement, otherwise known as a Medigap plan. And I'm saying that because you'll have no secondary coverage. If you drop your Advantage plan to go into original Medicare and a drug plan, you're going to have to pay 20% of everything and a big hospital deductible. So if you, just because you drop your Medicare Advantage plan doesn't mean you're going to get guaranteed approval for a Medicare supplement plan, all right? Because in most, so in most states, you're going to likely have to answer some health questions when applying for a new Medigap plan. And we have to, um, we don't want to enroll in a Part D plan until we find out if you're eligible to get a Medicare supplement plan. So why do we need an open enrollment period? We've already made our minds up in December, so why are they giving us one more chance up until March 31st to change Advantage plans? Well, okay, so the three biggest mistakes that people make during the fall enrollment period is the biggest mistake is they don't read their annual notice of change. They say, hey, I got the United Healthcare plan. Uh, it looks like it's the same. It's probably the copays look similar. Um, I'm not worried about it. They're going to cover my drugs just like they did last year. And you say, the heck with it. Big mistake. A lot of times the drug formularies change. Okay, so... Here's this lady going into the drugstore, and she's like, I need my Eliquis, and I need my Humalog. And she just finds out, he says, look, I'm sorry, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. And why is that? Because she didn't look at her annual notice of change to see if the drugs that she took were still on the formulary. Other big problem is doctors, doctors' networks. You might see in the annual notice of change that your primary care doctor or specialist are no longer accepting that plan, all right? Okay, so AEP, a lot of you might have said, hey, guess what? There's 2,000 in dental, or they're going to give me a grocery card, or this or that. And you make the change. You see Joe Namath on TV. You never want to do business like that over the phone. But this year, I'll, I'll admit, I made a mistake. I switched a few of my clients from uh, a well-established company to a company that was new in the area because they were offering uh, dental, vision, thousands in dental. They had said they had 40 dentists in the network. And then when my clients went to the dentists that were in the network, the dentist said, yeah, we stopped taking it. I'll tell you who it is, it's WellCare. So WellCare, my clients, and not only that, they went to some of their specialists, even though they were in the uh, WellCare provider, uh, network, the directory, the doctors were in their network on the website, even on the Medicare website. When they went to their doctors, their doctors said, we're not taking well care anymore. So, you know, also prescriptions. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, prescriptions change in the formula each year. And 
even I'll check, well, I'll check the drugs in the Medicare.gov computer in my own software, and mistakes are made sometimes. The drug, the formularies aren't, aren't always accurate. The tiers, it, it might be a tier four drug instead of a tier three, and, and, and that's a reason for, that's why I call my clients, I text them, I send them videos, to let them know if there's a problem, let's fix it, okay? And I'll be the first to admit, I, um, I got sucked into the dental and the vision. A lot of my clients have very little money, fixed incomes. And then um, basically well care didn't deliver, so we're gonna switch to Humana and we're gonna double check their uh, prescriptions in the computer, make sure the doctors are in network. So these are things you have to do and you can use your open enrollment period to make one change, okay? Other thing is, if, you, um, if you're in good enough health to pass underwriting, you may find that the uh, Advantage plan has co-pays you were not aware of, hospital co-pays, 20% for uh, Part B injectables like cancer treatment. Um, some of the outpatient surgery uh, can be 20% for some of these Medicare Advantage plans. That could, uh, that could really hurt you. The last thing I want to say when you're comparing different Advantage plans, in my opinion, too few agents talk about this. Your maximum out-of-pocket. Your maximum out-of-pocket. Out your maximum out-of-pocket is your worst-case scenario, what you could spend in one year. And a lot of these plans, it's 7500 that of your money that you'll spend. Once you hit that, you don't have to pay any for the rest of the year. Out of network, most of them are 10000 Okay, guys, so what is maximum out-of-pocket? Maximum out-of-pocket is your worst-case scenario, like I said. So here's a few plans in our area. Here's a Humana, PPO, zero premium. You're looking at 7550 in network, and if you go out of network, it's the same, 7550 Now, you're going to go to the hospital quite a few days to hit that. Outpatient surgery, the big thing is if you get cancer or need Part B injectable drugs on radiation, chemo, that's going to get you up to 7500 real quick. Here's the interesting thing. If you, this is a good reason during OEP. If you see that your, your Humana plan that you have is a 7550 out of network, out of pocket, that's what you pay in co-pays, not including your drugs, then you see, hey, there's a plan in my area that's only 3450 out of network, less than half the cost, especially if you have cancer, or you just found out something serious has happened, and you have a, let's say, a 7500 out of network, or Aetna, they've got a 7550 in network maximum out of pocket. That's what you pay. Once you hit that, you pay nothing the rest of the year. But if you go out of network, it's 11300 Most of them are 10000 You go out of network, 11300 So if you're sick or you found out recently that you have issues and you're going to need all kinds of stuff, Go with a low maximum out of pocket. Make sure your doctors are in that work. Make sure your drugs are covered and they're in the formulary. And then go with a lower maximum out of pocket. It's a no brainer. 3,450 versus, and that's in or out of network. All right? Okay. Okay, guys. So the open enrollment period is a chance for you to fix issues. Your drugs aren't on the formulary. Doctors aren't taking the plan. You didn't look at the notice of change. Or the new Medicare plan that you went on is a mess. You can use OEP to change Medicare Advantage during OEP. That's what you use it for, okay? The other thing you can do is if you're healthy enough, you can enroll in a standalone drug plan. First thing you got to do, though, is before you enroll in the standalone drug plan, which kicks out your Medicare Advantage plan, you want to first apply to for a Medigap or Medicare supplement plan. Once we get the okay on that, then you enroll in the standalone drug plan, which kicks out the Medicare Advantage plan. That's only if you pass underwriting, okay? So in conclusion, you have different enrollment periods. You, the purpose of the open enrollment period is if back in the fall, you change Advantage plans or you kept the one you have, but it's changed on you, then you can use the open enrollment period to either switch Advantage plans or switch back to original Medicare with a standalone drug plan, all right? And SCP, special election period, a lot of my folks on Medicaid, Medicare, 
extra help, folks that move from Ohio to Bluffton, they can use the SEP, a qualifying event that allows them to switch throughout the year. Okay, that's all we got. And last thing I want to say about open enrollment, the reason why you haven't heard of open enrollment on the news or on TV is very simple. We as agents and companies, carriers that offer these advantage plans, we can't proactively go out and try to get you to switch from the plan that you're on to something else. It's not a marketing uh, time for us. What we can do is make sure our clients are okay. If they're not, we can make that change. Uh, so um, this video is not to say, get out of your plan and call me. No, if your plan's working, your drugs are covered, you're getting them at a reasonable price, your doctors are in network, your maximum amount of pockets low, you know, then stay put. You don't need to move. If you're having issues, first thing you need to do is shop out all the plans in your area. Type in your drugs, your doctors, make sure they're all in the network, all right? That's what we do for our clients every year. Do I make mistakes? Yes, but I rectify them. When do I do that? During open enrollment period. You guys have a great day, all right? Bye-bye.